Welcome, and thank you for clicking on this video. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Flight MIDI Bass. By viewer request, how does it sound? How does it play? Let's check it out. If you are new to this channel, I am an electric bassist based out of Winnipeg in Canada. Now, unfortunately, due to an autoimmune arthritis and other health conditions, I have needed to kind of really scale down my basses. And these days, I spend probably 80% of my time playing short scale bass instruments. And on this channel, I've been featuring lots of short scale basses. Now, I have heard back from several viewers asking me what I think about the really small short scale mini basses, in particular, the ones in the 23 inch scale range. So, by viewer request, today we're going to be checking out the mini bass from Flight Ukuleles. Now, the company, as I understand it, it predominantly makes ukulele type instruments, but not that long ago they started making a solid body bass. So this is the Flight Mini Bass. It features a solid body, mahogany body, it has a really cool looking quilt maple top, it has a roasted maple neck that's bolt on, tilt back headstock design, matching headstock. Overall, pretty sharp looking bass. This mini bass features a precision style pickup that's not in the middle, it's favoring towards the bridge, and it has a kind of fender style bent metal bridge with adjustable saddles. Completely passive electronics, master volume, master tone. This is a 23 inch scale instrument measured from saddle to nut. This has a very comfortable 1.5 inch nut width, and it has a bone nut right out of the factory. Now I want to point out the very interesting feature about this bass that really sets it apart from anything else in the market. These are metal round wound electric bass strings, but they are made in the string wound length to fit this 23 inch scale. So the gauges, according to the website, are 105 to 45. This is unlike a lot of the other kind of ukulele style basses that have that really thick rubber band polyurethane type strings. These feel like electric bass strings. Well, let's hear how this flight mini bass sounds. Let's start with the volume all the way up and the tone knob all the way down. Tone knob at around 50%. Let's roll the tone up all the way up, wide open. Well, how versatile can this flight mini bass be? That's certainly the question I had when I first took delivery of this. Well, let's find out. Let's put this flight mini bass up to three different drum tracks in three different genres and we'll see how it sounds in different styles of music. In this first playing example, we're gonna hear this bass in a more kind of punk rock type setting. 
We have the toe knob wide open at 100%, and let's see whether or not it can rock. Let's go. In this second playing example, I'm going to roll the toe knob back to about 50% and we're featured this bass in a more kind of funk, dance, hip hop type setting. Let's see how it fares. Let's go. For this third and final playing example, I'm going to roll the toe knob down to 25% and we'll hear it in this kind of country, bluegrass, early gospel type style. Let's see how it fares. Let's go. I hope you enjoyed those playing examples. Please let me know what you thought of the tones by leaving a comment below. My assessment. Let's talk about the good things. At time of filming, according to the Flight Ukulele website, these are suggested to sell for around 369 US dollars. And for that price, this is really well made. The first thing that really struck me right out of the box is how comfortable this neck is to play. Now, it's a sh really shrunken down version of necks that I'm used to playing, but in terms of the profile and the shape and how well this neck is finished, it's really comfortable. The other thing to point out is there was not a single sharp fret edge on this neck. I play with a glove on my fretting hand and usually on more entry level bases, my gloves uh, my gloves are catching on a lot of fret ends and it just rips them up and tears them apart. That's not the case with this flight. These fret ends are, uh, they almost look like they're covered and inset uh, in the fingerboard. And I'll put up a picture here. So there's no fret sprout on this particular example and the fret ends are nicely rounded. So big thumbs up for that one. In terms of construction, this neck pocket is really, really tight. So it's very well fitted that way. Out of the box, the setup was pretty good. The string height, uh, the nut height uh, was all done very well out of the factory. I'll come back to intonation uh, in a little bit, but overall, I thought the pickup height was set pretty 
optimally as well. And the pops and knobs turned pretty smoothly. Now let's talk about some of the things that I didn't quite like or didn't quite get on with. Now I know I just told you that the fit and finish was really good, but there were a few little spots that, you know, a few little niggles here and there at this price point, I think is probably acceptable, if not, you know, expected. And I'll put up a closer picture here, but on the sides here, it looks like there were a few imperfections in the wood that were covered with some kind of filler. Uh, and as a result of that, the filler took the stain a little differently than the mahogany did. So you can see some of those spots uh, in different parts of the body. Now, as anyone who's ever finished wood before with polyurethane or spray lac or anything like that, you will know how difficult it is to get a gloss finish to be perfectly mirror-like. And unfortunately here on, on the back, there were a few bubbles uh, in the top coat. Really hard to see on the camera here, uh, but I'll put up a photo where I just use a reflection of one of my studio uh, ceiling lights where you can see some of the bubbles. It's not a big deal. You can't feel it because uh, it's been buffed smooth, but you can see it. Now let's talk about the sound and the tone of the instrument. In the lower fret, so one through five, one through six, it sounds bigger than its 23 inch scale uh, would suggest. However, due to the super short scale length, the higher up the neck you go, the more phasey and incoherent and fuzzy the notes start to be. Let me demonstrate here. So I'll have the volume knob all the way up and the tone knob all the way up here. So especially in that G string, those notes lack a little definition and it has that kind of chorusy, uh, phased -y type uh, character to it, which for me makes the bass probably from, you know, kind of the ninth fret onwards, uh, less playable from a tonal perspective. Now with respect to the pickup, Depending on where you're playing and the environment electrically and uh, interference wise, um, there is a little bit of noise that you can hear. This bass today in this studio, depending on the orientation, you get a different type of hum. So I have the volume and tone knob all the way up. So it's worse there. So it is acting a bit like an antenna, unfortunately. Uh, and despite this being a P-style humbucker type pickup, it is susceptible to a little bit of noise, at least this one. Now, in terms of playing ergonomics, now I'm not a ukulele player, uh, and I'm also not used to playing such tiny instruments. So for me, coming from uh, both short scale, so 30 inch scale and full scale uh, electric bass instruments. The body was so small that I felt a little cramped in the playing position. Uh, and this was particular true uh, in, my, in my plucking hand. Usually I like to rest my forearm on, on the top of the body, but because the distance is so short, this, this body position here kind of did result in a little bit more uh, of, a, of an acute angle in my wrist that I would like, uh, purely from a comfort point of view. So I think, again, I'm coming at this as an electric bass player and not as a ukulele player. But I think if you were to want to play this instrument for a longer period of time, uh, you may need to have more of a kind of an outward elbow here and not rest your hand on the body. This way you can keep um, your plucking hand in a straighter line 
Otherwise, you're going to uh, end up with like a repetitive strain injury if you have that angle too sharp. One thing I want to point out about the intonation of this bass. I had mentioned earlier that the setup out of the box was pretty good, but the intonation uh, was slightly off. The whole bass was running quite a bit sharp. So I did have to pull these saddles back that way to try to get the bass to play a little more in tune with itself. And I think the problem I ran into here is I've run out of space to pull these saddles back. And I'll put up a closer picture uh, here so you can understand better what I'm talking about. From an intonation perspective, my feedback for flight would be to mount this bridge, maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch closer this way. Um, that way we would have a little more room for the saddles to move to get this bass to play more in tune with itself. So who do I think this instrument is for? I think, in my opinion, the, the biggest market could be for bass players in ukulele bands or bass players who travel a lot and busk a lot and play in a group setting where everyone else is playing smaller instruments. In that setting, if you show up with, you know, like a fan fret dingwall, then you might visually stand out. So in that setting, having a smaller instrument in that type of ensemble might visually look better. In addition, there are lots of different kind of ukulele style bass instruments with those thick rubber polyurethane strings. And for me, you know, used to playing an electric bass, I'm always fretting those notes really sharp because I'm pushing harder than I need to. Uh, and if you don't like the feel of those rubber band uh, type uh, bass guitars, then having a mini bass with electric bass strings might be right up your alley. So that might be uh, targeted towards people who play that type of bass. But this uh, particular bass comes with its own fitted gig bag and it's really easy to busk and travel with. So if you're just looking for uh, a really easy travel instrument, this could be for you. So there you have it. My thoughts on the Flight Mini Bass. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll catch you next time. Peace.